Ethiopia, land of origin of mankind, is found in the midsection between Africa, Europe, and Asia, and is considered as a gateway to Africa. The land of Ethiopia, which has never been colonized, is not only the home of one of the world's most ancient civilization, but also the cradle of humankind. It also hosts nine World Heritage Sites, including the eye-boggling, rock-hewn churches of Lalabella, the magnificent Simeon Mountains, and many more. Going north to south, west to east, marveling over the 80 nations, nationalities, and peoples living in the country, one can also testify it is also a land of origins and a home of diversity. The first being coffee, which humans started to savor for centuries after it was first discovered by a goat herder named Kaldi in Ethiopia. However, it has taken long for the Ethiopian people to introduce sugar to their coffee, which is prepared involving a unique and beautiful traditional ceremony, to be exact, until 1954. That year, marked the establishment of the first sugar factory in the country, Wanji Sugar Factory. The factory was established by the former emperor Haile Selassie's government in partnership with the Holland Company, HVA. The company used to hold free sugar tasting events all over the city, acquainting people with the sweet taste of it, so that the 1,400 quintals of sugar produced per day by the sole manufacturer, Wanji Sugar Factory, ended up consumed. But it only took a few years for the sugar fever to catch on all over the country, making sugar the heart of the people's day-to-day -day life next to coffee. Nine years after the installment of the first sugar factory, the second factory, named Showa Sugar Factory, was constructed adjacent to it. Even then, both were replaced by the new Wanji Showa Sugar Factory in 2013 due to old age. In the meantime, Metahara and Fincha Sugar Factories joined the scene in 1969 and 1998, respectively. Moreover, following suits to the government's prime priority for the expansion of large-scale sugar projects across the country, the sector saw the construction of one of the biggest sugar factories yet in 2015, Tendaho Sugar Factory in the Afar region, 670 kilometers north of Addis Ababa. Others include Kesem, Omo Kiraz II, and Arjo Dedesa Sugar Factories, with annual production capacities of 260,000, 250,000 and 144,000 tons of sugar, respectively. Currently, all these factories combined produce 4 million quintals of sugar, but could not meet the new interest the people and the industry has developed towards sugar. In a bid to close this supply-demand gap, the government has invested in the construction of additional sugar development projects, Tanabelis and Welkayet. When commenced, Tanabelis will have an annual production capacity of 484,000 tons of sugar, while Welkayet will also have the capacity to produce 484,000 tons of sugar per year. Until recently, in total, more than 100,000 hectares of land has been irrigated and covered by sugar plantations. Cognizant of the gap between the demand and supply of sugar locally, also with the aim of tapping into the export market potential of the sector, Ethiopia has been carrying out sugar development activities that can be termed as sugar revolution since 2010. Of course, uh, to fill the gap also, uh, we are doing uh, a lot of uh, projects. At the end of second GTP, our sugar uh, factories become 13. And with this, uh, the demand will be fulfilled as well as uh, it will be it will be surplus, so it will give us a room to, to 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 look into the international market for export. The major responsible factor for the widening gap between the demand and supply of sugar is the fast economic growth the country is experiencing in the past decades. Ethiopia has been registering an average 10.5 percent economic growth between the years 2005-2006 and 2015-2016 
surpassing the region's average growth 5.4%, according to the World Bank. Therefore, along with these, some significant changes are occurring in households as well as on the national levels. The income of uh, the population is also increasing due to job opportunities uh, obtained by uh, the people and the buying power is increasing. In addition, the industrial development, uh, beverage industries, pastries, and many uh, sugar utilizing uh, factories are increasing in the country. And therefore, uh, this demand is increasing from time to time. Moreover, the growing population of the country, which currently stands at 102.4 million, is another contributor to the rise in demand. The aggregate result of this has left a measurable distance between the supply of sugar and its demand. The amount of sugar the government supplies currently ranges from 6 to 6.5 million quintals per annum, whereas only 3.5 to 4 million quintals of sugar is produced locally, leaving the rest of the sugar amount to be imported from abroad. Although unfortunate, this market gap can be an opportunity ready to be exploited by investors who are interested to engage in the sector. Nevertheless, this is not the only opportunity investors search for when waiting to join the sector. Generally, sugarcane uh, is a basic for uh, sugar production. It is a main raw material. Uh, there should be favorable climate for sugarcane production. The other is uh, land availability. Land availability is a limiting factor. If there is no fertile land, it's hard to grow sugarcane and to manage it. And as water availability, there should be uh, ample water. At the same time, these factors should be backed by a conducive investment environment, a developed infrastructure, and an abundant resource for labor. And luckily for those looking to invest, Ethiopia measures up great against these odds. Globally, uh, sugar uh, cane yield is uh, on average it's around 8 ton, 8.5 tons per hectare per month. In Ethiopia, this value could reach about 10.8 or 10.5, which means it is very high. And it is uh, especially the pioneer sugar factories in the country are above average of the world uh, production. Dubbed the water tower of East Africa, Ethiopia is rich in its water resources. It has around 124.4 billion cubic meters of river water, 70 billion cubic meters lake water, and 30 billion cubic meters surface water. Along with this, it has the potential to develop 3.8 million hectares of irrigation. The second most populated nation in Africa is also never short of human resources. Furthermore, along with the expanding economy, the government is also developing and expanding the access to various infrastructure all over the country. The government developed a lot of infrastructures like roads, like telecom, like electric power, uh, dams, uh, and uh, still the main canals as well. So. The government also assures it will always be there encouraging and supporting investors in each step of their business endeavors. Mr. Hugh of Complant, which also carried out the construction of Omo Curaz II, shares their take on the existing business environment in Ethiopia. The new Prime Minister has already started the economic reform. I think uh, uh, the country is open to all of the foreign companies, for all, especially on the investment, is, uh, on sugar industry. All these favorable conditions bundled up together is sure to make the production cost of sugar low and increase businesses' competitiveness in the international market. Apart from this, the government has identified profitable areas investors can partnership or directly invest and engage in the business. One of these, including new sugar development projects under construction, is the largely anticipated Omo Curaz Sugar Development Project. Here are the directions the government looks forward to work on together. We are ready to work uh, 
with uh, local as well as international uh, investors uh, as a joint venture or in terms of total ownership transfer or maybe uh, we can we can also work together uh, in both ways in the byproducts as well uh, secondly uh, since this industry needs a lot of uh, inputs like spare parts chemicals uh, and service as well so we are also looking the, the private investors uh, to collaborate with us in terms of supply of spare parts, chemicals, and uh, service provision. Engaging in these development projects has its own perks. The Sugar Corporation uh, constructs irrigation infrastructure for 175,000 hectares, and the road uh, networks, housing buildings for the laborers, and the bush clearing. Land preparation works are also completed because we simplify all those the investment costs. And then right now here in Omokuras, the uh, operation cost is very minimum. This will surely destine the factories to be competitive in the international market. This project is constructed by using Omo River and uh, playing ground. With this fertile ground, uh, uh, our production uh, cost is very minimum. In addition to this, the path to investing in sugar byproducts is also a lucrative one. Even though there is no or little use for these byproducts currently, the government is looking forward to developing these resources. Recently, this effort has borne fruit, which led the government to sign a joint venture agreement with the German company Jugend Schmidt to set up an ethanol plant at Wanji Showa Sugar Factory. The company, which has vast experience in producing ethanol across the world, has allocated $55 million for the establishment of the factory. Capitalizing on these initiatives, the government expects to engage the private sector, both local and foreign, in developing this sector. By the end of the second Growth and Transformation Plan, GTP, in 2020, the government plans to increase the annual sugar production in the country to 2.8 million tons, having 13 sugar factories in operation. This will allow it to export sugar while fully meeting the local sugar demand. Moreover, the ethanol production is also projected to reach around 29 million liters annually. Without a doubt, combined with other developmental activities, this will smooth the transition the country has embarked on from agricultural to an industrial-led economy and envisioning joining the lower middle-income countries of the world in 2025.